Hello you guys, welcome back. Um, miss you again. I hope to see you sometime soon. Hopefully we will see each other again. Anyway, welcome to session 13, uh, Statistical Process Control and Control Charts. I have trouble saying that word. Okay, we're going to talk about control charts mostly in this whole series and then you're going to be creating a bunch in Excel. So I did this because I want to make sure that you take um, this part of the information and get it done before we run out of your 30-day uh, free trial. All right. So um, <clears throat> you use control charts to represent, analyze, and interpret process data and also to help study the process variation, okay? It shows the reliability as a supplier to your external customers, okay? When you show these control charts to them, it gives them a lot of good feeling about things. And it can help you improve, <coughs> excuse me, improve the process for internal customers by removing any fluctuations or disturbances. There's always the two type and it shows these very clearly it's called the common cause variation. Remember that's just what's happening during your process. Those you can fix in special cause or there's that normal ones that are just kind of strange. A common cause are the ones that you have to work with your bosses and all. Special cause are the ones you fix immediately like those aberrations. So we'll see that the control chart can help you distinguish between the two. If you look at this information here you'll see that it is stable. Okay got the same repeatability um, and only common cause variation because you keep doing the same things over and over again. Over here you can see that you have a, a common cause and possibly a special cause variation because these are jumping outside of the norm. You want them to look like this. Okay the top one is the one you want them to look like. This shows you unstable performance. Okay. So we talk about histograms and we've done these, right? You've done a couple of them already. Um, they don't take into account changes over time, but control charts can tell us when there is a process change and how things are changing and deviating. And we can actually call, we have some names for how these things change. So we'll talk about them too. <clears throat> so the control chart can establish a state of statistical control and it can monitor your process, right? And you can tell when you're going out of control. This also helps you determine what's called this process capability, which we'll do, be doing next week. Again, also in time enough to make sure you don't run out of your 30-day trial. Now we have what's called a central limit theorem. Um, these are the averages of a sufficient number of the single measurements. Okay, this number n is your measurements will follow a normal distribution. Remember that bell-shaped curve, right? Your histogram showed you that a lot. So the more averages you're collected, the closer to your overall average, which is your average as is called the X double bar, and it approaches your true average. Okay, so if you have enough samples, and again, the number greater than 30 gives you a better indication. Okay, so you over 30, 30 samples or more are a good amount because that just shows you that you are collecting some good data. And the sample average will approach a normal distribution. So this is the basis behind the control charts. So these are just some of the different methods and the central limit theorem. So populations, okay, they can like peak and then mellow out and then peak again, or they can go up gradually. They could be stable they could just decline. And then here's some different sampling distributions as well. But here's this bell-shaped curve that I was talking about. That's this normal distribution. And all of these, these here are little aberrations you can see. And here are little aberration, but these look pretty decent, these middle ones here. And this is like really running close to what you want to be. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the characteristics of, code, of the control chart. There's a normal distribution. And then the control chart measures these, okay? So what we call this average is your center line. And um, we have what's called the standard deviations or these sigmas. So six sigma comes from these. The plus, you have three sigmas to the upper control limit and three sigmas to the lower control limit. And when you looked at your histogram, you saw that you had the same thing. You had, but they, we saw them more on a horizontal axis this way. So here's your center line. So you had these negative three sigmas and then you had these positive three sigmas. Okay, so that's where this comes from, the six sigma. And we'll talk about that in another um, class. Okay, so again, the characteristics are on the y-axis is what you're actually interested in, your, what it is you're measuring, and then it's over time is your, your x-axis. I'm sorry, your y-axis is your stat, statistic of interest. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. So if you read them, okay, what you look at here is you have this limit, okay? So we're going to look at temperature and in degrees C over time, okay? So we look at an upper control limit and a lower control limit, and we see how our numbers range over that. Now this data looks a little spotty, but in reality, because it is, it is, it's within its limits, it's fine. And it may look like it's not really in control, but it is in control. So we're not out of control here. You may have a certain degree of variation that you're okay with. 
So outside of these limits are those special cause variations, and then inside here are the normal things that you deal with every day. Okay. Steam pressure, same thing. Here you can see on this one particular point, I'm sorry, that the temperature, um, I mean the pressure almost went outside of the limit, but it didn't, so it still hung in there. And some of these, again, are some aberrations. Just and whatever happened, something might have happened that day in particular, but you're still in control, okay, because you haven't gone past your upper control limit or your lower control limit. Okay, now we're going to talk about the data that you're actually going to collect. Um, you're going to have variable data or attribute data. So attribute data is like data that is counted or discrete data, okay? Like you can um, pick a certain attribute, say uh, someone, how many uh, people that of your friends have like blue eyes, okay? And then you can count that, and that's your attribute that you're doing. Variable data is measure data, and we're going to look at the next slide. I'll show you a little bit about that. Let's talk about these here. So if we're looking at a variable that we're going to measure, we can either look at it as an attribute discrete data or a continuous data a variable. Excuse me, so I want to tell you how we look at that. So if we let's take our gas tank, you can count how many times it's empty or full, or you can also, that would be discrete, right, attribute, or you can look at it continuously, like what is the total volume every time you go to the tank gas, um, you go to get pumped, maybe figure out how much you fill up. Okay, so that's the number that you measure over time. Tree heights, you can look at it discreetly, like you could just say they're tall, medium, or short. But variable or continuous is you can actually measure them in meters. Now performance, you could say someone is a poor, poor performer, an average, or a good performer. That would be your discrete piece. Variable would be, oh, well, how much did you get done in a certain amount of time? Okay, that's your performance. Temperature, you could say how many days were above freezing or as discrete data, or you could look at variable data and say, well, these are the average temperatures over time, okay, and then so on, and you can just look through the rest of them. All right, so we have commonly used short control charts, and these are all the ones you're going to generate. So we have over here, for variable data, we generate these X-bar charts and R charts and S charts as well. X-bar and S, they go together, okay. Here, we're looking at um, individual charts and the number of defects, is, defects above and below those limits. Attribute data, it's for defectives and for defects. You do a P chart, an NP chart, or you do a C chart and a U chart. Now, what's important is this piece here. So when you're collecting your data for your quality paper and your quality improvement that you're doing, you're going to look at the data that you're collecting to see if you want to use one of these types of charts to see how, you're, how well your process is doing or not doing. So you basically you look at your type of data and you decide, is it attribute or is it variable? Is it counted? And if it's counted, then you look at the number of the group sizes, okay? And if it's attribute, yes or no, constant subgroup size, okay? So that's what you're going to look at here. Then you type, you either get an NP chart, a C chart, a P, or a U, and that's how you work that out. When you're doing variable, you look if it's frequent or infrequent data. If it's infrequent, then you want to do this moving average in R chart. And then if it's um, frequent data, you look at a large or a small group. If you're looking at a small, small group, you do an X bar R. And if you're looking at a large group, you do this X bar S. And we'll just talk a little bit more in detail. I don't want to go in too much. You just have to look at this and um, see how you're doing. Uh, and you can ask me for any advice and help them to know how you might want to run these charts to see what would be good. But um, again, as David said when he came in to visit you guys, Mr. Hum, and he said that it was a good idea to use a control chart just to see how far your data is out of, if it's, again, in control or not. So the X bar R charts are variable. Again, we talked about using that chart we just looked at here. Whoops. And then um, it's just giving you the way it's grouped, okay? It is one of the most commonly used charts in all of process. So you want to detect differences in your subgroups over time, and you have two types of charts that are generated. So you'll do these in your example. How about if you're looking at if we're looking at strength over here, right? Uh, a sample and the average, and then the sample. Okay, all the different samples and what its actual strength is. So this is what they're charting here, and then a range of it is what it's going over the range of that. This is your average. How from how far from an average that you're looking for, and over here, what is the range? Okay, special variables control charts, X bar and S chart, and X chart for individuals. X chart, S bar, S charts are for standard deviations, so if you don't have a lot of data, you might look at the deviations, the standard deviation in all the data that you have collected. Again, this is all generated in Excel. You don't have to worry about calculating it. Again, you just have to know which one of these you want to generate. 
So they're constructed similar to X bar R charts. And then they use these as a standard deviation instead of the range. Okay, so remember both standard deviation and the ranges were measures of a spread. How, again, how far apart are your um, needs and what you're looking for? Okay, so here's just another couple examples here. This is the X bar, and this is the um, standard deviation part. Then we have a moving range, right? Sometimes what happens is um, you have a group size of one, and the distribution of the X values must be close and known, must be known and close to normal. Okay, so here this is if you're looking at one thing, you're looking at one flow rate and each batch number in particular, and then you're seeing that the flow rate's changing over each of these batches and so you might want to know why that's happening and you can detect this and create an x-bar moving chart right moving range chart okay that's how you would work with this and you can see that your range is changing and it was starting to get I thought it was going higher from you but deviating from the average okay so it's in frequent data and you're moving your average as well as a moving range all right now to develop the control charts so again um, the most important thing is to choose your measurement and determine how you're going to collect your data, your sample size, and your frequency of sampling. And then you're going to collect your data. You're not going to worry about setting up the chart. You're just going to collect the data because you're going to put it in Excel. Okay. And then you're going to calculate the appropriate statistics, which will be all done in Excel. Determine your trial control limits. You let Excel dot determine these for you and analyze and interpret the results. This is what we'll get to soon. Uh, determine if it's in control and eliminate the out of control points. Okay. So that's what you, that's where you take your data and you look at this and you see from your project point where you need to go from there. And then you can use another type of uh, problem solving tool as well. Okay. To help solve this here once you see that it might be out of control. Okay. So here's just a couple more examples. Here's a X bar chart, an X bar R. They're going to make one of a silicon wafer, and it's just look. We're looking at different measurements. Okay. Again, this is all done by hand, and we're not. We, I mean, you can write this all down, but then translate it into Excel and copy it right into Excel, and then you can make a, a graph. And this is what they did here. Sorry about that. Um, the silicon wafer, and they're showing you the different averages and the ranges. Okay. And here. The calculations, which again, you're not doing because it's all going to be done in Excel. Another one here. This is variable control chart. Again, variable data. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. X bar chart example two. We're going to do one of these in your Excel point uh, activities. This is temperature ranges over certain days, okay, for your condenser. So you're running a condenser and you're trying to figure out why these are changing. Okay, so you're going to be just gra graphing that information. Again, we're not doing this. You're not going to do all this. You're going to just take the data and put it right into Excel. All right, so to construct one, we're just skipping through this because we're just going to take that data. So we would take this data and just put it right in Excel, okay? That's what we would do. And then you'll generate this kind of a graph. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and resume in another PowerPoint uh, over voiceover in a few seconds video. So your assignment in D2L is to look at the tower overhead temperature, create an X bar chart there. Okay. There's questions in Word. And so go over that and then um, post it in D2L and use your Excel. And okay, I'll be back in a few minutes.